Okay, my beloveds, thank you for hanging in there with me. So let's get started. The pastor who is super amazing, <laughs> she started off talking about vulnerability and all the ways that we are vulnerable and how we try to fight to not be. And she said that what happens is because of what was instilled within us when we were children, that we needed to be strong, that we needed to not let anybody see us cry, especially when we were listening to our fathers and our mothers talk to our brothers. They were always told men don't supposed to cry. And when we are supposed to be very strong, assertive women in the business place, we're not supposed to show emotion because if we do, we're labeled emotional and weak and way too vulnerable. So we can't be trusted with big executive decisions. Being vulnerable, according to the definition of vulnerability, is being open to attack, easily harmed, and and weak. But there is a verse, a passage, a scripture, I should say. There's a scripture in the Bible that talks about one of the apostles. And the apostles, he had a very, mm, I want to say prideful attitude about himself. He was way too gleeful, and he needed to be calmed down a little bit. God has a way of telling us to humble ourselves. So he wasn't very humble as an apostle. So he ended up having some type of situation with Satan, and Satan put a, a thorn, a very sharp thorn in his hand, in the middle of his hand, and it stayed in his hand for a very, very long time. And he would go to God, the apostle would go to God, and he would pray and he would tell God, please, can you remove this? It interferes with my work because he was a writer. He wrote the entire New Testament. I don't know why his name escapes me, but it's escaping me right now. So he wrote the entire New Testament. And he kept on asking. He went to God first time, and God said no. He went to God the second time, and God said no again. Then he went to God again the third time. And he said, my grace is sufficient And the apostle wasn't sure what to think about that. So as the pastor spoke about it, she said, well, she didn't understand. And, and, and I thought the same thing. I said, well, if he knew that Satan gave him the thorn, then why would he let it stay there? Why didn't he remove it? But the pastor later started speaking about how it was there to show the apostle that you needed to humble yourself because when you walk around and you think that you can do everything all by yourself, when you think that you are above it all and you are stronger than anybody, then you are saying that you are above God and you are stronger than God too. And he does things to put us in a position where we have to trust him and allow him to be the strength that he wants to be in our lives because he can do things that we cannot do on our own. 
But there are many times when we walk around and we think that we can handle any and everything, right? Until we fall down way too far and then we realize we can't get back up. Until we get involved with that wrong individual and now we're stuck in the situation and they're putting their hands on us and violating us every time we turn around. But we didn't pay attention to the warning signs because we thought we could handle it, right? Or we get caught up because our friends decide that they're going to go and do something that they have no business doing. But we figured, well, you know what? This is, those are my people. It's all good. I'm just going to go in there and it'll be fine. I'm a good talker. I'll just talk us out of it. I've talked us out of everything else, right? And it's that one time, one time too many. And now you, you have a record because your talking did no good and you were all arrested. So she spoke about different scenarios on how we don't look to God for guidance and support when we should and the times when we should stand on our own and do it we don't. And so he's trying to get us to strike a balance between the two. Because often we get very confused, especially when it comes to fear. When God is saying, why are you afraid? I'm always with you. Fear doesn't exist because I didn't give you a spirit of fear. So why are you afraid? Do you not trust me? So that is when he wants you to go ahead and step up and fight for yours. But you don't. Because at those times we feel like we are at our most vulnerable moment, we don't want to fail or be hurt anymore. We don't want to try it again. So we recoil. We retreat and we throw our hands up out of aggravation and disappointment and great discouragement. But God is saying, go against the fear, fight against that fear. And when you fall, I'm right here. I'm going to help you. But we don't know that. We don't trust that because we always standing on our own, talking about we can do everything. We can stand and do everything all by ourselves. And we don't need anybody to help us, right? Until something goes wrong. And then we're looking for help and support. And that help and support never arrives. And then we're wondering why. Well, it's because you said mm -hmm. you didn't need anybody. Because you said you can do it all by yourself. So God, he wants us to understand that his grace is more than sufficient because in our weakest of moments, God's power is activated and released in those weak moments. There is power in the weakness that is within us. And that is where God shows up the most. But he only does that when we are allowing him to, when we are trusting him to. So if there's something leaning on you that is blocking you, Think a little bit about what it was that you didn't release. Think a little bit about what it is that you are holding on to that you know is a hindrance, but you're holding on to it for whatever the reason may be. And you know if you let it go, you're afraid to let it go. But mm. you know in your heart of hearts, if you let that thing go, that that will help you and that will turn your whole life around. But some of us are just as afraid of success as we are of failure. So as the pastor was speaking, I started thinking about all the moments that I am at my most vulnerable. And I already know because I have vision issues. 
and I get most vulnerable when I am out and about and it's nighttime and there are certain things that I can't, I'm just really being really real right now. There's just something, things that I just, it escapes me because of the way that I, I see things now. And that's when I pray my hardest. But I keep telling myself, don't go out. Don't go out at night. Don't go out at night because you're going to fall down. You're going to hurt yourself. You're going to hurt somebody else. But God is telling me, no, daughter, I need you to get up and I need you to go and do this and that and the third because I got you. If you fall, I got you. So I'm saying to you, beloved, that I have my own vulnerabilities, that I am exposing myself when I come on this show and talk to you guys about these types of things because I live these things. And regardless of whether you are in the same position or, that I am or not, it doesn't really matter. What matters is that we are all in some type of a mist of a weakness that we don't want nobody to know about which is why we want to put perfect pictures on all of our Instagram and our Facebook pages. We want social media to see us as perfect individuals. We don't want anybody to see our flaws, right? Because they're going to talk about us. Ooh. Well, they're going to talk about us anyway. Even if our hair is well done and the makeup is flawless and our outfits are dripping, they don't care. They're still going to talk about us because then they're going to be saying other things like, well, I don't know what she's wearing that for. Where she thinks she's going? Oh, she thinks she's cute. Mm -mm. They're still going to say something. And these are all the things that the pastor, well, that's what the pastor said about social media. Be careful. Just be careful social media. They're not your friend. Unless you actually know them and they actually are your friends and they actually are supportive. They will be the only ones really clapping for you. Those are the ones you pay attention to. But everybody else, no. So as you move forward in your journey today, Push past your weaknesses. Embrace your vulnerability because there's power in vulnerability. But that is God's grace and he is omnipresent, omnipresent and omnipotent. And his grace is definitely more than sufficient because that is where his, his greatest strength shows up for you. Okay? Vulnerability is also beautiful. And when you can open yourself up and be truly authentic, people can't help but gravitate toward that. They can't help but gravitate toward that, which is why a lot of women are gravitating towards men who are willing to show us something real, like show us something real. Instead of trying to be all macho all the time or overly dramatic with the over expressions of emotional rage. We don't want all of that. Have a conversation. Let us know what's really going on.